My name is Chase, and today I would like to talk to you about feral cats, specifically in Fort Worth, and the way the TNR ordinance passed in 2012 can be a tool used to help unsocialized and unadoptable cats have quality lives outdoors rather than going to shelters and end up being euthanized. A feral cat is a cat that lives in the wild that is not domesticated with humans. These cats are not equipped to live indoors in close quarters with humans also. They could have been born in the wild or just spent a very long time out there. Okay, so what? Can't we just leave them alone? In short, no. Leaving them alone would lead to an enormous amount of cats outdoors because of how quickly they do reproduce. One female can produce more than 100 kittens in her life. In many places, they use trap and kill methods to manage outdoor cat problems. But here in Fort Worth, in 2012, they passed a TNR ordinance. According to the Fort Worth Animal Care and Control, the TNR ordinance allows free roaming cats, including stray cats, feral cats, and neighborhood cats. The ordinance allows for cats to be spayed, neutered, vaccinated, ear tipped, and then released back to where they were captured. The city of Fort Worth sees this as the most humane way over euthanasia. Feral cat colony managers feed the cats in their colony daily. Managers make sure the cats are in a safe environment and keep track of new cats in the colony. They also often manage the spaying and neutering of the cats. Now we're going to meet with cat colony managers Mark and Mary. She's been feeding since Day one that I know about. When, it, oh, when Sue left, about 2008, is when they started feeding on a regular basis. So, right. so it's been about what uh, eight years now, good eight years. Wow. So, and I just started about a couple years ago. You know, you would feed the cats every night, and, <laughs> and then I chip in once in a while, and then I, I feed them every night. Then we got even. Have you ever been told by the business owners that own businesses right down on this strip of the street? Have you ever been told by them not to feed the cats? Yes, our business. Our business. Where are you going to go? Yeah. Is it pretty often or is it? It's not often. They gave up on me. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think the business owners own this part of the land? Do you think they have the right to tell you not to feed the cats if it is their party? Well, I'm pretty sure they don't own this. This is, this is a park, I believe. Mm -hmm. Park type of, yeah, you know. Know. What is your overall love for these cats? What, what compels you to want, want to make them have, have a better life? Not have to well, besides uh, lo loving cats um, and dogs, just yeah. wanting to alleviate some of the suffering. Yeah. Have you seen anybody dump a I, I have, but al although when you get a cat that's instant, instantaneously friendly, you know that cat is dogs, mm -hmm. right? Like this one. And if you ever saw somebody uh, do that, would you report it? You know, I don't know who to report it to. Uh, would I? Uh, Mark and Mary manage cats that have not yet been spayed or neutered. Hopefully, with the help of Texas Coalition for Animal Protection, we will be able to start spaying and neutering of the cats to stop the reproduction cycle, which is endless. I feel if the city decided one day to come back here and trap and kill your cats, what would that, what would that do to you? Yeah. I do, my best, to, I do my best to... No, <laughs> uh, sabotage their efforts. That's yeah, yeah. you know, in a, in a non-violent way. Mm -hmm. so. Have you ever heard of the new uh, type of law that they have passed to uh, trap, neuter, and release cats back into the wild so they don't reproduce? Right? I have. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, would you guys be open and available? for uh, these cats being neutered in spade? Not me. Okay. That's the most humane thing. Yeah. 
because eventually we're not going to be here and uh, they'll just uh, begin to uh, starve mm -hmm. and, you know, and lead a very savage, vicious life. Yeah. Well, uh, we're going to give a call to action mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to probably slowly start uh, spading and neutering these cats and releasing them back there so, they're, so they can you know, live better lives. Yeah. Um, just wanted to congratulate you guys for being excellent caregivers. I really time. appreciate you guys coming out here every day and doing this because I love cats and I think they didn't they didn't deserve to be back here. They, it just happened. Yeah. So. so I'm sure you're thinking, TNR sounds like a great solution. I mean, who actually wants to euthanize cats? Well, most who are against TNR are those directly or indirectly affected by feral cats. Listening to cats yowl and spray is annoying behavior that can usually be eliminated by spaying and neutering. Another group largely against TNR is the American Bird Con Conservancy because of the claimed impact on bird population. However, feral cats that do hunt largely prey on mice and rabbits over birds. TNR has drawbacks as well, despite all the plus sides. The first is ownership. The dilemma here is are colony caretakers the owners of cats? If they are legally the owners of the cats, they could be liable for any damage or issues caused by the cats. Another large dilemma is preventing animal cruelty and protecting the cats from risks they face outdoors. Loco's Law passed in 2001, makes animal cruelty a felony or misdemeanor in Texas. This law classifies cruelty as torture, abandonment, and killing all as animal cruelty. Even though laws are in place, cats are still abandoned outdoor by their owners and cats are still deliberately harmed by humans. Even though these laws are in place, they are difficult to strictly enforce. Sitting here today with cat owner Brenda McDonald, and I'm here to learn a little bit about her experience with owning cats. Uh, his name is Sushi, right? Yeah. So Sushi, he was, he was, um, he was a cat from a friend. He wasn't, he wasn't doing real well in their household. So I took him in. He was still a bit of a kitten, so he had a wild streak and he liked to go outside. Uh, we did not keep him out all the time. He, we tried to keep him as an indoor cat, but the one night he got out and he didn't come in. He wasn't even gone 24 hours. And it was the next day I was calling him and I couldn't, I couldn't find him. And well, it was one of my biggest fears. Um, I know sometimes, you know, there are coyotes that probably run through and um, when I found Sushi, I thought maybe a coyote had got him, but I'm a nurse, so I looked at him a little closer and he was actually cut in half by, it looked incisional, it looked like it was like it, a clean cut? It was a clean cut in half. Mm -hmm. And they had him posed. He was laying right out back, in, right outside the fence line where I would have found him eventually. I just don't um, go out there that often. And he, they had him laying on his side with his paws crossed over. So it was almost like he was posed. Mm -hmm. And the weird thing was, there was no blood, he was clean, and he was a white cat, and he wasn't dirty, there was no blood on him, and there were no organs. It, he was completely clean as so a someone, half of a cat. So someone probably struck him. I don't know what happened. It seemed to me that it was done by a person. Mm -hmm. But later that day, I called animal control and they were so wonderful. I got a hold of a gentleman and he listened to me. I told him the whole story. 
He said, we'll get someone out to your house immediately. But I was at work, so he was going to have someone come that evening. But it ended up they couldn't get there till the next day. Um, but it wasn't him. A, a, a female came out the next morning, dug up, and she took pictures of him. And she wanted to take him, um, but we wouldn't let her take him. We wanted to keep him out in our flower bed with, um, with our fish and our other cat. Um, so they weren't going to run any more tests. Apparently they could have ran like some DNA or something to see if it was in fact a coyote or not. But she said that they don't have the technology really to do that here in this area. Um, and I also asked if this had happened before, if she had had something like this reported in the past. And both her and the gentleman from Animal Control the night before said no, they had never heard of this. And they were, they were totally shocked to see something like this happen. So you said you were happy with the way Animal Control helped you out with your situation, like coping. Um, do you think that they could use like uh, measures to like prevent this from happening again, like outside? I know there's a lot of cats, stuff like that, but do you think there is a way that they could prevent, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, um, I again, I was very pleased with how compassionate they were and how sensitive they were to my feelings and, and the situation in general. And their response time was wonderful. But you're right, they, I mean, they don't have like a database or anything set up in, play, in place. So, you know, these two particular officers had never heard of this happen before. But who knows if it is happening in the area and if there was some type of a database to, con to control these things or, or have them in one place or even you know, report it to the police because that's another step I had to take. Mm -hmm. So it didn't get reported to the police and, you know, it, crimes like this against animals are reportable to the police. Mm -hmm. But again, they reinforced that there's nothing they can really do about it. They couldn't, unless I, you know, short of me having videotape of someone doing something, they really, there's nothing they can yeah, really do. Yeah, they're stuck at the crossroads. Um, under the angel.